Forests a natural resource. Introduction Forests are what we call as the home of many varieties of plants and animals. About one third of the world's land surface is covered by forests. Forests are of different types depending on their geographical location. The main features that characterize a forest are its soil and topography. The forest floor provides favorable conditions for the seeds to germinate and develop into seedlings and saplings. Some grow up into trees. The branchy part of the tree above the stem is known as the crown of the tree. The branches of the tree look like a roof over the other plants in the forest. This is known as canopy. Trees have crowns of different types and sizes which create different horizontal layers in the forest. These are known as understories. Giant and tall trees constitute the top layer followed by shrubs and tall grasses and herbs formed the lowest layer. Due to different climatic conditions, there are variations in the types of trees and other plants. The type of animals also differs from forest to forest. Forests supports life. If you visit a forest, you will come across numerous insects, spiders, squirrels, ants, butterflies and numerous other small animals. You will also find tiny mushrooms over the decaying leaves. Apart from the animals which are easily seen, there are several organisms and microorganisms that we cannot see in the soil. They feed on the dead plants and the animal tissues and convert them into a dark colored substance called humus. The microorganisms which convert the dead plants and animals to humus are known as decomposers. These microorganisms play an important role in the forest. The presence of humus ensures that the nutrients of dead plants and animals are released into the soil. From there, these nutrients are again absorbed by the roots of the living plants. The dead animals become food for vultures, crows, jackals and insects. In this way, the nutrients are cycled. Forests are called green lungs because plants release oxygen through photosynthesis which helps animals in respiration. It also maintains the balance of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Forests are also facing a tough time like any other natural resource. They are largely being cut to meet the requirements of the growing population. Importance of Forests Forests have been helpful to man since primitive time. Early man gathered many skills from the forests. Discovery of fire, wheel, agriculture all are credited to the forests. Wildlife depends largely on forests. Typical variety of plants and trees are found in the forests. To sum up, there are a number of ways in which we directly or indirectly depend on the forests. Rainwater falls on the leaves of trees and then drips slowly on the forest floor. Thus, water does not collect and stagnate on forest floor. This prevents flooding. The roots of the trees prevent soil erosion. They keep the soil particles bound by their roots. Trees help in regulation of temperature by absorbing groundwater through their roots. This water is then released in the form of water vapour and helps in rain. Plants in the forest absorb water from the soil and release it into the air through transpiration. This increases the amount of water vapour into the air and helps in cloud formation. It causes an increase in rainfall. It also cools the surrounding air. Trees help in controlling global warming by absorbing carbon dioxide, which is the main greenhouse gas. Some trees act as windbreakers on the coastal areas. They can withstand strong winds, thereby preventing the area from any kind of damage due to heavy winds. A variety of wood is available from trees like mahogany, sal, teak and rosewood. These are the sources of raw materials to many industries like plywood, paper and pulp etc. A variety of spices, nuts, dry fruits and fruits are available from trees in the forests. Forests are the home of many medicinal plants too. A variety of fibre is made available to us through the forests. Some common fibres are cotton, jute, linen, hemp and flax. These fibres can be brought to a number of domestic as well as commercial uses. Forests are sites of attraction for tourists, geologists, naturalists, etc. Interdependence of plants and animals Plants and animals depend on each other for basic survival, 
needs like food, protection, shelter and propagation. They are interconnected and interdependent. Dependence of animals on plants. For food, all animals depend for their food directly or indirectly on green plants. For oxygen, plants produce oxygen during photosynthesis and animals require oxygen for respiration. For shelter, some animals depend on plants for shelter and safety. Trees provide protection from rain and shade from the heat of the sun. Dependence of plants on animals. For carbon dioxide, animals produce carbon dioxide during respiration which is released into the atmosphere. Plants utilize this carbon dioxide for preparing their food. For pollen and seed dispersal. A number of insects and birds help in pollination. Some animals help in dispersal of fruits and seeds. For supplying nutrients. Animal excreta and their dead bodies add nutrients to the soil. They act as manure and provide mineral for plant growth. Forest conservation. All our needs for land for housing and farming and that for wood for fuel and construction, we cut down more and more forest. This is known as deforestation. This has a harmful impact on the environment. Hence, there is a constant need to manage forests carefully to conserve them. Aforestation. This is the practice of renewing a forest by planting seedlings or small trees. Selective cutting of trees and plantation provide wood for constructions and also help the forest cover intact. Protection from insects and pests. Methods of controlling diseases in forests include removing infected trees and using insecticides and fungicides. Insects and pests can be controlled by natural insect predators. Protection from fire. Trees in forest areas are destroyed by fire every year. Forest fires are controlled by spraying fire extinguishing solutions from aircrafts or by changing the direction of wind by using strong blowers. Protection from overgrazing. Overgrazing by cattle not only destroy grasslands but also trees in forests. Young plants are either eaten up or trampled. The lower leaves are eaten up and roots and trunks are injured. Overgrazing must therefore be prevented to save forests. Food chain. All animals depend on plants for food directly or indirectly. The producers are eaten up by the herbivores. Herbivores in turn are eaten up by carnivores. Carnivores may further be eaten up by other large carnivores. In this food chain, energy is transferred from plants to herbivores and from herbivores to carnivores. This process of food transfer from plants through a series of organisms with repeated eating and being eaten is called a food chain. Thus, a food chain indicates who eats whom. A typical food chain in grassland is grass, deer, lion. A typical food chain in a pond is algae, small fish, hawk or plants, caterpillar, sparrow, hawk. Food web. We have several food chains in nature that are connected to each other. All food chains are interlinked. This interconnected network of food chains is called food web.